So for making your chicken curry, the first thing on your recipe card says to put some oil in the saucepan. We will provide your oil in school and you just need a drizzle of oil. On your recipe, it says a tablespoon of oil. Um, probably a bit less is okay. So we provide your oil, so that goes into your pan. Ready. Don't heat it yet because you need to prepare your onion. So that's in ready. And the next step is to prepare any vegetables. So an onion, garlic, and anything else you're using. Now we suggest um, one onion, two cloves of garlic, and if you like mushrooms, you could add mushrooms. They are optional. If you like to use something like pepper or courgette, of course you can add any extra vegetables, okay? So with our onion, if we are preparing vegetables, we use a green chopping board in school, yeah? and we need um, one of our sharp knives. Now, you know a lot about knife safety. We want to see you using the bridge and the claw, okay, to keep your fingers safe. I'm using today quite a small red onion, but you can use any, any onion. And you may remember me telling you the best way to do this is to cut through the root and the shoot. So remember the root and the shoot you're going to cut it lengthways through the root and the shoot. Try and remember that. So lay it down on your board, do a lovely bridge hold and cut it in half. Okay. If you then cut off the shoot end, you've then given yourself a corner where you can peel the skin off more easily. It's virtually impossible to peel an onion unless you've cut it like that. So peel off the outer skin, any papery layers or anything that's a little bit um, dry, just peel it away. This onion's quite small. Put your peelings to one side. Don't forget we use the compost. So in your classroom, you'll put your peelings into your compost box, okay? Now with your onion, if you cut towards the root, but not through it, going one direction, I'm starting with a claw grip. Then I'll move to a bridge hold until I've cut all the way along. And notice this is the good way of doing it. Do you remember? Because it keeps it all in one piece. It makes it, stops it all falling apart on your board like magic. Turn the other way and make your cuts the other way. The closer together, the smaller the pieces. So you can make quite small pieces of onion, okay? The wider the cuts, the chunkier the pieces of onion, which will require longer cooking time. I sometimes quite like bigger pieces, but I make sure they're cooked through really thoroughly, okay? So my onion's ready. Um, I'm using two cloves of garlic. So remember, it's like two little sections of garlic. You will need to cut off each end and peel off the outer skin. And in school, we have um, a garlic press or you can finely chop them. So you'll have an option there. The garlic presses will be out on the side for you. So that's what it looks like peeled. And I'm just going to finely chop with my sharp knife. Go one way, just be really careful. Remember, we've got these lovely new knives that are sharp. And what is the garlic going to do? Why are we adding garlic? It's gonna add lots of flavor, definitely. Okay, um, I mentioned about other vegetables. So if you like mushrooms, you could use some mushrooms or any vegetables that you think would work well. I've just got a small green pepper, which I'm also going to prepare. Now, I always do the cutting around the core or the stalk rather, and I stand it up 
upright so it's nice and stable and I'm cutting around the stalk and I do it in a, in a square. I find this is the easiest way. So you cut one side, another side, another side and the last side and you're left just with the stalk with a square. Tap out the seeds and push them to one side. Okay and where you've got a kind of spongy membrane here I suggest that you carefully cut that out and the safest way is to always be cutting away from you not towards you until you're more confident with the sharp knife okay that bit is got a weird texture plus some people think it's got a bitter flavor Gordon Ramsay thinks it's got a bitter flavor so it must be true so we cut that out okay tap out the seeds Skin side down for pepper um, is easier than skin side up. So the shiny side down and you can cut how you like. I'm just going to do some strips and then cut the other way. You might want the pieces a bit bigger. It's up to you. <coughs> Bless you. That's on my video. Bless you. <laughs> You're famous. I wonder if I can edit that. Okay. So all the time, a good claw grip. Keep those fingertips out of the way. Line them up and cut through, okay? So here on my board, I've got onion chopped, garlic chopped, and pepper chopped. That's what I'm using today. So we are now ready to start um, frying our vegetables. We are going to turn on the heat and we always say a medium heat. So on the electric, something like a three is medium because it's halfway between one and six. On the gas, you can see um, on the dial, it's just literally sort of halfway round. <clears throat> now, your recipe says fry for three to five minutes until soft. This is called sweating, cooking without colour sounds horrible doesn't it sweating but it's like gently frying you're not browning it and you're absolutely not burning it okay so here's my saucepan ready um i'm going to put in all of this together some recipes will ask you to cook the onion first then add the garlic and then add the veg but this works absolutely fine in this recipe you can actually get everything in together you are going to fry gently, remember, on a medium heat, using a wooden spoon. Oh, you're writing the equipment down. A wooden spoon to stir it. And it will start to sizzle a little bit. You'll hear it cooking. So here are the vegetables in the pan. We've got the onion, the garlic, and the peppers. We have got our pan handle to the side for safety. It shouldn't be like this. It should be here for safety. Um, use the front of the hob where possible if you have to have a third person working at the back, but ideally use the front. Um, and if somebody's a little bit taller, perhaps they could use the back one where they can reach more easily, okay? We're working on a medium heat and you need to control the heat. If it's too hot, turn it down. If it's not doing much, you can turn it up and then turn it down, okay? So that is the vegetables that are sweating, okay? That means lightly frying without colour. Okay, the next step of the recipe, it says add the chicken pieces and cook on a medium heat until each piece is white and sealed. So it will turn from pink to white. And in school, what we're asking you to do um, is if you can bring your chicken in ready cut, that would be really helpful. However, if you bring it in in a chicken fillet, you can prepare it in the lesson. But don't use your green chopping board. You would need to use a red chopping board. And the purpose of that, or the reason for that, is that we're reducing the risk of cross-contamination between 
the vegetables and the meat, okay? Make sure you're using a clean knife, a clean sharp knife, or in school we have poultry scissors which are really handy for chunking chicken really easily. So you've got options there. But my advice is to bring it in ready cut. Here I've got a piece of chicken, so I'll just show you how, I'll just show you how to do that. So red board, you see that on there? Um, so if I was using the scissors, you just basically get a section of the chicken and cut it. So you cut a sort of slice off like that and snip and snip. or use the sharp knife. These are really quite useful. So you want chicken that is in nice chunks, not too big, not too small. The type that you would find in a curry. And don't forget, you can substitute your chicken if you want to use chickpeas, mm -hmm. tinned chickpeas, tinned lentils. You could use corn. corn. You know corn, like the vegan alternative? It's a textured, um, textured vegetable protein, I think. And it's um, something that vegetarian or vegan people can eat. Corn is now all vegan. It used to be vegetarian because it had egg in it, but now I believe it's completely vegan. So you can check the packaging. There's my chicken that is... Um... So as you can see now, the vegetables are sizzling really good idea to actually remember to switch it on at the socket because I forgot to do that one time and I wondered why it wasn't cooking. So make sure it's switched on. Control the heat. If it seems too hot, turn it down because what you don't want to do is burn the vegetable. Okay? We are softening the vegetables. It says on your recipe three to five minutes and it will be a bit quicker on the gas because the pan gets hotter a bit quicker. Electric, you need to wait for it to get hot. So when you're happy that your vegetables are softened, you can then add in your chicken and you cook it until it is sealed. So it turns from pink to white and you'll use your wooden spoon to stir it. Always a wooden spoon and not a metal spoon, please. The metal spoons get really hot and they hurt your hands. Ouchie. So here you can see the chicken is sealing. It's turning from pink to white. Just keep stirring it. Then you'll be ready to add in your um, other ingredients, your curry powder, tomato <coughs> puree, and tinned tomatoes. So when your chicken is sealed, you will add your tomato. Here's a tin of tomatoes and then you will add some curry powder and a bit of tomato puree. So if we look at the quantities, um, obviously one can of tomato, but you could use coconut milk or creamed coconut. The coconut milk will make the sauce runnier um, than the tomato. You could use a combination. The curry powder, you need, um, let's just see how much a tablespoon or you could use curry paste and a tablespoon of tomato puree just concentrates the flavors although it's not completely necessary but it does kind of just um strengthen the flavor of the tomato so i'm nearly ready to add them in so the first thing i've got to do is open my tin um always ask for help with the tin openers so it, we've got a few different types this one it latches on um, give it a squeeze, it will click and you hold the handles and go round with the handle. Please make sure you're using them correctly. If you're not sure, you must ask. So it's gone all the way round. You will need to wash your tin opener and very carefully lift up the lid. Again, if you need help, I'd rather you ask for help. Um, I'm going to tip the tomatoes in to the curry. 
rinse our tins and recycling, please. Curry powder. Okay, curry powder, one tablespoon. That's the largest spoon. This is a medium one. Obviously, if it's a hotter powder, you might use, oops, you might use a bit less. In it goes. Tomato puree, a tablespoon. You can do it by eye or you can measure it. Shh, videoing. Um, not much left in this one. So, a tablespoon of tomato puree also goes in. So just to recap, once the chicken is sealed, you put in your tomato or your coconut milk or coconut cream, you put in your curry powder or paste, and you put in your tomato puree. Then you need to stir it all together. So in the pan, you can see I've added the tomato, the curry powder, the tomato puree. And all you're going to do is carefully mix that in Please don't splash it all over the hob. Try and keep it in the pan. And what we're looking for is clean hobs, not like half the curry all over the hob. So mix it in. Then you will leave it to simmer, which is small bubbles. And you're going to leave it to simmer for, the recipe says 20 minutes, but probably 15 is enough. We need to keep on our eye on the clock and let you know um, your timings and when you need to have everything in the pan by to make sure we finish on time. So when that has simmered for 15 to 20 minutes, you can stir occasionally. And while that's happening, you can get on with your washing up. Don't, you don't have to stand there stirring it. You can get on with clearing up, but make sure you pop back and give it a stir every now and then and make sure you control your heat. So we're looking for little bubbles of simmering. When it's done, turn off your heat and carefully tip it into your container, which should have your name on. And there you've got a lovely chicken curry. Thanks for watching. Say bye, everyone. Bye. bye.